Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. So today we are going to take a look at how to use Excel Solver to solve the systems of the equations uh, and also the quadratic functions. Uh. So let's get it started. So the first problem that we are going to take a look at is from one of our dynamics uh, problems. Uh. Then it's a bumper car problem and we are going to use conservation of momentum uh, and also conservation of energy. Then turns out to be with the conservation of momentum, we have equation one. And from the conservation of energy, we have equation two. So we will need to solve this systems of equations. So let's look at the solver. So your solver should be under the data tab over here. If you already brought that up before, then if you haven't, so we have to bring up the solver first. Then let's click on the file tab. Then go to options at the bottom. Then go to add ins. Then Excel add ins. Then click on go. Then have solver add in checked. Then say OK. Then Excel solver should show up right here. So before we open Excel Solver, we need to set up the functions first. Then we are going to type in our function one over here, then function two over here. Then whenever we use the variable v1 and the v2, we are going to click on v1 and the v2 here. So let's type in the first equation. Then it's going to be equal v1, which is this style here, then plus v2, this is the style here, that equals to 1. So let's don't worry about the 1, then hit enter. Then that's the first equation. So for the second equation, so let's tap in enter. Then it's v1, so click on this style, then square, then plus v2, click on this style, then square, then equals to 13. So don't worry about it so far then hit enter. So now we are going to open solver here. So click on solver. Then the first one is the objective function. So we have two functions. So you can set one as the objective function, then the other is going to be the constraint. So the sequence doesn't matter. So I'm going to set the first one as the objective function, then the objective is to make the first function to be 1. So the value is going to be 1 here. Then by changing styles, uh, so those are our variables. Uh, so select those two variables. Uh, then subject to constraints. Uh, so we haven't put in the second formula yet. Then add a constraint. Then click on this style here. And we want to make it to be 13. Then equals to 13. Then say OK. Then the two functions, they are here. Then this option says make unconstrained variables to be non-active. So in this case, it's not necessary because if you look at our solutions, then we do have negative numbers. So this function is only for some problems such as you cannot schedule negative two people on the shift. So that's for those problems. Anyway, so our problem is good. Then let's not check this option. And this is a nonlinear problem. So it's nonlinear problem here. Then when we click on solve, then we will get the answer. So some people may say, what about your initial guess? So the initial guess, it won't matter because whatever initial guess you start, then Excel Solver will be able to converge to the final solution for most initial guesses. But for some of them, you may not find a solution. Then if that's the case, then you just need to try your initial guess again. 
but almost 99% of the cases, uh, then any initial guess will work. Uh, so let's see what's happening for this problem. Uh, that looks like all the setting is correct. Then let's click on solve. Oh my God, solver could not find a solution. Oh my God. So like we said, so for most initial guesses, it's gonna work, but for still 1% of the chance that you're not going to get the solution. So let's cancel that. So instead of a zero, zero, let's try something else such as one and two. Okay, then let's try it one more time. Okay, then solver, then solve. So finger cross. Uh, yeah, so now we find a solution. So. In this case, the V1 is negative two and the V2 is three, then let's say okay for that. So from your college algebra, that looks like we are supposed to have two sets of answers. So actually those are the two sets of the answers. So we could try a different initial guess, see if we can find others. So last time we tried one and the two. So now let's try negative one and the negative two, see what's happening. So negative one, negative two here. Then let's solve it again. Then solve. Oh, find a solution. Then the answer is a three and a negative two. Then say, okay. Then the answer is one and the other is almost a 13. So looks good to me. So that's as for this problem. Then let's look at the second problem. So this is a quadratic function. So theoretically, we should have two solutions. Then let's try it one more time. So we are going to put in the equation first. So it's equal sign, then 200, so times the variable square, and minus 298 times the variable, then minus another 250, then hit enter, then let's solve it. So click on Excel solver. Then the objective function is going to be this style here. Then we want to make it to be zero, right? Zero. Then by changing variable styles, it's going to be this style here. So we have only one equation, so we don't have any constraints here. Then for this problem, so still we could have negative answers. And it's a nonlinear problem. So let's click on solve. So it says find a solution. So this one is negative 599. Then we could say OK. So like we said, this quadratic function is supposed to have two answers. So let's try a different initial guess, then see what's happening. So let's try it as like five, six. So let's try six, then see what's happening. So click on solver. Now everything is the same, then click on solve. Then it looks like the solution this time is 2.09. Then say OK. So those are the two solutions. So besides the systems of the equations and the quadratic functions, we can also use Excel to perform optimization. So if you want to know more, then you can watch my another video at the top. Do we have more examples about Excel Solver in there? All right, so this is all we have for today's video and hope you learn a lot. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.